let's first go ahead and look into modeling division. You know, how, how would a picture of division with decimals look like? How would you model it using a number line or perhaps um, drawing rectangles or circles, dividing things up into parts? But um, a number line model, this number line model is a pretty, a pretty sick way of doing it. And let me just show you how this works. And when you do this, you know, you first have to understand what the problem's asking, okay? So first of all, we're dividing 6, this number 6, by 1.2, 1 and 2 tenths. What does that mean? That basically means, you know, and I know you don't think about division this way, but maybe you do. It basically means, you know, how many 1.2s are in 6, basically. How many times does 1.2, or 1 and 2 tenths, divide into 6? Okay, and, and really all we're talking about right here is estimating if it works out perfectly great. But really, that's all I want to know. I want to know how many times 1.2 goes into 6. So using this number line model, uh, it would be kind of easy. So I know not everyone's going to be able to draw a number line with tenths in there, but these are all a tenth. Okay, and I did that because uh, we're dealing with 1.2. So 1.2 means 1 and 2 tenths. So that's what I want to figure out. I want to figure out how many of these go into here. That's, that's really what division's all about. So 1.2. So let's go ahead and figure this out. So 1.2. All right, I'm going to start at 0. And then here's 1, and there's 0.2. OK? So that's 1. So I know at least 1, 1.2 1 goes into 6. But I'm, 6 is way over here. So I want to figure out how many 1.2s go into it. So I'm going to keep going. All right? I'm going to keep going here. Try to use different colors so you can see what's going on. Now I've got to be careful here uh, when I come to the next 1.2, because this, this was equal to 1.2. Right? So I want to go 1.2 again, but I can't go like, it's not going to look the same as this. I mean, it's still going to be the same amount, but this time I'm going to go, it may be easier if I just think of it as, um, as 12 tenths, you know? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there it is, okay? So there's our second 1.2. Sorry if this is getting sloppy. All right, let's keep going. All right, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to count. It's easier if I just count 12 tenths. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there's our third 1.2. Let's keep going here. Again, I'm going to count by tenths. One tenth, two tenths, three, four, five tenths, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So right there, that is another twelve tenth or one point two. That's our fourth one. Now it looks like I'm going to be able to get to six perfectly, but let's not count on that. Let's just make sure it works out the way we think it is. And let's count over 12 again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That worked out perfectly. That is, that is some amazing math right there. So 1.2. So what is our answer? Well, look, if you look at all of our groups here, if you look at all of our groups, we have five groups. We have five. So 1.2 goes into 6 five times. So I'm not estimating here. That's actually perfect. So there's five 1.2s and six. So that's one way to do it. Now I could have drew rectangles, you know, six rectangles, and divided them into tenths. I could have done that. I could have drawn circles, divided them into tenths, and, and figured out how many 1.2s go into it. Uh, any model works. Number line model seems to work pretty well, though, because it's easy to divide up. You know, circles, maybe not so much. OK. All right. Now, uh, another thing that you're going to be able to, you're going to want to do is use compatible numbers, okay? Estimation using, using compatible numbers. Now, compatible numbers, 
make division easier. Okay? Don't confuse it with rounding. It's not necessarily rounding, although you don't want to be too far off. But it's, it, it is close to rounding, but it's not rounding. Don't think, well, I, this isn't working out, Mr. Oliver, because, you know, my numbers don't divide when I round them. Well, that's not the thing. You, compatible numbers make division easier. And it's up to you to make it work. You have to make it work out. And you have to be a little bit creative. And this takes a lot of thinking and knowing a little bit about numbers, you know, knowing your math facts, your basic facts. So if you don't know your basic facts, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to go to, you know, some website or go online and practice them and really get them down. You should know your math facts by now. You should know what 8 times 9 is. 8 times 9 is 72. Uh, you know, 6 times 3, you should know that that is 18. Um, you know, it, it should be very natural to you, like writing your name. You don't even have to think about it. You, you should know 6 times 7 is 42. It just slips right off your tongue. You know, it's just really simple math. If you don't know your math facts, you know, take some time. It does not hurt. You know, I know you think you don't need your math facts anymore because you have calculators, but it really is something you need to know. It helps you when you get into algebra. It helps you when you get in high school math. It, it's just something you need. You know, it's a good foundation. Okay, end of my lecture. Let's go ahead and keep moving on here. So with compatible numbers, we want to make the numbers work. Now, if I were to just round this, you know, if I were to round 9.3, that would be 9. And that still doesn't work out. 85 doesn't divide by 9 cleanly. It doesn't divide by 9 evenly. So I want to make it work. Now, I'm going to be a little bit creative here. I don't want to work, I don't want to do too much to change it, but... I notice that if I change this to 9, which is, which is rounding basically, but if I change 85 to, for instance, 81, that works out really nicely. 81 divides by 9 evenly. I know that. So 85 obviously didn't round. We didn't round it to 80. We didn't round it to 90. I just changed it into a number that 9 can divide by. That's called compatible numbers. We made them compatible. 89 or 81 and 9 are very much compatible with each other. So 81 divided by 9 is 9. Okay? So I'm betting if you use your calculator on this and you were to solve this, you would get something probably close to 9. Now, not perfect. You know, if I do the division, I'm doing it right now in my calculator. If I do that, I got this. 9.1397. It just keeps going. Okay? But how about that? 9.1. That's super close to 9. So our estimate was pretty right on. It was, it was really right on. Okay? So for this one, we thought 81 divided by 9. Okay? Which is 9. Now this one, of, uh, the next one here, what do we want to think? All right, this is 22.7. This is almost 7. What if we did 21 divided by 7? I'm not really rounding. Now, 22, if I rounded that, that would be 23, you know, if I rounded it to the nearest hole. But, again, this is not rounding. It's just making them work. And 21 and 7, very much compatible. They are, they are uh, very much, they go into each other. That's how it works. And that's easy to do in my head. 21 divided by 7 is 3. So that would be a pretty good estimate for 22.7 divided by 6.9. Now when I use my trusty calculator, I got 3.28985, blah, 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 you know, on and on and on. So our estimate was pretty close. Now remember, mathematicians, it's, it's important that you estimate so that you know when you actually do the math yourself, and if the answer is not very close, then you know you, you, you did it, you know, either you, you either didn't move the decimal the right number of places or perhaps um, you didn't put the decimal anywhere. Maybe you just kind of left it. All right, so let's move on here. All right, 94.5 divided by 0.87. All right, I am going to do for that one. Again, you, could, you might be able to have a little bit of free thinking here where you can kind of do it your own way, but just remember, don't, Try not to change these by a lot. 
So I'm going to do 90 divided by 1, which couldn't be any simpler. 90 divided by 1 is 90. So that's what I'm going to think. Okay, 90 divided by 1. On the next one here, let's do, I don't know, uh, let's do 35 divided by what? What do you think? What's 35 compatible with that's close to 4.3? That is correct, 5. So 35 divided by 5 is 7. Okay? So that's compatible numbers. Remember, compatible numbers, you make it work. You don't want to change them by a lot. And it's, it's a little bit confusing to, to explain this to somebody because I always get the question, which is, you know, Mr. Oliver, how much should I change it by? And it's kind of up to you. I would say the bigger the numbers are, the more you can change them by. The smaller the numbers are, you don't want to change them by a lot. You're, you're allowed that much room in terms of how you round or how you um, make them work. Just remember, bigger numbers can be changed by a lot. Smaller numbers can be changed by very little. Okay, here, again, let's do some compatible numbers stuff. So 37.2 divided by 8. I would think of this as 40. 40 is compatible with 8, and that's 5. That's compatible numbers right here. 31.48 divided by 4. I am thinking of changing 31.48 to 32. Now, even though if I were to round this, if I were to round 31.48, to the nearest one, I would get 31. But 31 isn't compatible with 4. 32 is. So I just, I moved it up to the next best thing, which was 32. So 32 divided by 4 is 8. That would be a reasonable estimate for that problem. Okay, one more here. We need to change probably both the numbers. 33 and 219. So let's change 219. Well, actually, let's, let's look at the divisor first. Let's look at this number first. Let's change that to 30, because 30s are easy to do in your head. 30 times 2 is 60. 30 times 3 is 90. 30 times 5 is 150, like 15, with a 0. 30 times 7 is 210. 30 times 9 is 270. So 30s are not hard to do in your head. It's just like doing your 3s, but put a 0 on it. Okay, so now I'm going to divide into 219.78. And I want to change that 219 to something that 30 is compatible with. So 30 is compatible with like 180, right? 30 times 6, it's compatible with 210, it's compatible with 240, it's compatible with 270. I'm going up by 30, by 300. Now I would say, among all these numbers, I would say 210 is probably the closest, right? It's not perfect at all, but. And, you know, if we truly rounded this to the nearest ones, we would get 220. But 220 does not divide by 30 um, in an even fashion. So there's a decimal point. So how many times is 30, or how, how about this? How many times is 3 going to 21? 3 goes into 21 seven times. So 30 goes into 210 seven times. There's no difference. So 7. Okay, when I actually do the math on this, when I truly, you know, if I use my calculator, I get 6.66, okay? And that's not too far from 7. Okay, that's not a bad estimate, okay? All right, so that does it for your flip lesson today. I hope you guys get this in time. I'm doing this earlier in the day than I usually do. So, um... Make sure, if you have any questions, bring them to class tomorrow. I hope you guys understood compatible numbers. Have a great night.